Welcome back, America. To you, are joined by Senator Tom Cotton. Senator, I hope you'll forgive me. I don't really want to talk about your Ranger status, which is not in dispute anymore. I'd rather talk about impeachment, if that's okay with you. <laughs> well, thank you, Hugh, and thanks for the kind words and uh, to you and Coach Lichter and the others you've had on the show about the, well, co- the controversy. It, it's not a controversy. It's a dumb reporter who didn't do any work. Uh, Senator, I just had Ted Cruz on. He believes it's constitutional to proceed with this impeachment. I do not. Neither does Judge Ludig, nor, neither does Alan Dershowitz, neither do you. Um, will there be a debate on this first principle of constitutional law? The Constitution on its plain face says it is for the president, the vice president, and other officials. I don't know yeah, how you I, get around that. Yeah, Hugh, I, I hope we'll have that debate. Now, you know, the, the rules of impeachment are unusual compared to Senate rules. They typically require... Um, senators to sit silently at their desk and listen, not to speak, which I got to say to you for many of my colleagues is their own form of hell, or at least purgatory, (laughs) to not be able to talk um, on the Senate floor. But I think it's a debate we need to have. Um, I think for most Americans, uh, by the time we get around to the meat of this trial, not the procedural stuff today and yesterday, um, Donald Trump will have been out of office for almost a month. And it will just seem exceedingly strange that the Senate is having a trial to potentially convict and remove from office a man who left office a month ago when there are so many other pressing needs. And as you say, Hugh, the Constitution is pretty clear on its face. It says that the president, the vice president, and all civil officers of the United States are liable for impeachment. Um, Donald Trump is none of those things anymore. And and I think you're going to see the punctuation mark put on that today when it's Pat Leahy sitting up in the presiding officer's chair and not John Roberts. John Roberts' absence basically confirms that Donald Trump is no longer a officer of the United States who is susceptible to impeachment. I, I've seen the arguments to the contrary. Uh, a lot of them, are, in my opinion, are far-fetched law, law school hypotheticals of the kind that simply would not have appealed to the men who wrote the Constitution. Uh, they were lawyers, but they were also uh, common sense farmers and merchants and traders, and they wrote a document to be understood by farmers and merchants and traders, not Ivy League law school uh, professors. I don't even think it's close, but I also believe that if the president, former president brings an action to enjoin the proceeding, he will have standing for sure, and that the political doctrine question will not apply given the fact that there are standards it's not committed former officials are not committed by the text to uh, to the Senate. Do you expect the former president to do other than try and put on uh, evidence in the Senate, or do you expect him to try and use the courts to stop this charade? I don't know, Hugh, um, and I wouldn't presume to dictate um, what President Trump's legal strategy would be. Uh, if he wants to proceed to court, um, he may have a sound basis. You know, Chief Justice Rehnquist uh, has written in the past that most impeachment questions are not susceptible to judicial review, but he did suggest that one of them could be uh, whether or not the chief justice presides at a presidential impeachment. So that could be grounds for judicial review. Um, I also wouldn't presume to, to tell the president whether he should or should not have witnesses, whether he should or should not appear in, in person. You know, once we get into the meat of the trial, it really is a trial, and it's up to the House managers and the president's lawyers to present the cases that they want, and we'll listen to those cases. I just think the whole thing is beyond our constitutional authority, and I think there's many other things that we could be spending our time on the Senate uh, that would make a difference in the lives of Americans. There most certainly are. I, I do want to ask about the organizing resolution now that there's been an agreement from Kristen Cinema of Arizona and Joe Manchin not to change the filibuster. Will any of your committee assignments change? I don't know if you uh, yet. It's too soon to tell. Um, I do want to commend Senators Manchin and Senator Cinema for forcefully stating on the record uh, what they have said in the past um, in the middle of this controversy about the filibuster that they will not vote to eliminate this longstanding tradition of the Senate, which makes the Senate the chamber that gives the sober second thought on occasion to hasty action in the House, as we will in this impeachment, for instance, Um, and that they are not going to, on a bare partisan majority, ram through a radical change uh, to the nature of the Senate and the nature of our government. So I think it's very commendable that they said that so forcefully publicly and said that under no circumstances would they change their mind as well. Now the Senate can get organized. Our committees will be equally divided. 
Um, we'll go about our business, we'll do the people's business, and we'll make sure that we don't take radical steps like packing the Supreme Court or making Washington, D.C. a state on a bare partisan majority. You know, Washington, D.C. is constitutionally prohibited from being a state absent a constitutional amendment. I wish someone would make that point very yeah, quickly. Is, yeah. Go ahead, sir. That, that's it. Yeah, it's that, just, is, that is my view as well, Hugh. Uh, yeah. that even if they tried to make Washington, D.C. a state, there would be a legal challenge. That legal challenge would fail. The Constitution obviously designed Washington, D.C. as a federal city. And there's an amendment that says they get one. There's an amendment on D.C. that has yeah. to be altered before it changes. Very quickly, Senator Rob Portman has announced his retirement, surprising me. So has Senator Toomey. Do you expect any other members of the Senate to be stepping down? Um, well, let me just say, first off, I'm deeply disappointed in Senator Portman and Senator Toomey. They should know better, and I demand that they reconsider uh, and run for re-election in Pennsylvania and Ohio. <laughs> I'm with you. Um, but, uh, but absent that, uh, uh, you know, I think we'll have good candidates in both states. I'm not aware at the moment of any other senator planning to retire. Uh, go find them and shake them. Uh, I'll tell Portman I'll give him back his five bucks on the Bengals-Browns game. Thank you, Senator Cotton. I'll be right back, America, on tomorrow. Thank you, Ben and Harley. Thank you, Adam and Dwayne. You are listening to The Hugh Hewitt Show.